on the farm he had goats. Bah, 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 bah. Beautiful. Bye. Hey guys, it's Ellie here from McCarthy Farms. Today we're hanging out in the goat barn. As usual, I'm always hanging out in the goat barn. But I thought we would use today to make a little bit of a video about how we get ready for kidding season because Miss Hermione here is on day 140, which means there's only five days to go and do her due date. Sienna, what are you doing? I'm making a video too. You're gonna make a video too, are you? Oh, with your Lego, is that your camera? Oh, cool. So Hermione here and Miss Piper are both in kid to our buck, Daryl, who we've actually just sold to our friend, Christine. Um, and the plan is hopefully if they both give us a doe kid to retain a doe kid each from them uh, by Daryl. So Hermione is due in five days and Piper is due about a week after her. Um, so what we're going to do today is go over what's in our kidding kit. We're going to talk a bit about our kidding pen and our kind of setup for when our goats have their kids um, because we're doing it a little bit differently this time since I'm on the farm alone husband is away and he's not back for another few weeks um, it's a bit bit rough trying to kid down goats especially since I tend to always have nighttime kiddings while I've got a three-year-old and a one-year-old as well um, so rather than dragging them in and out of the barn to the goats 10 million times a night which I tend to do uh, we're actually going to bring the goats inside nice and close to us so we're going to leave these girls to their munching. Hey, Hermione. And go inside and show you how we're going to set up our kidding pen. So Hermione here and Piper are both Nigerian dwarf does. They're 25%. And um, they're half sisters by the same sire. We got them from our friend Leslie at Tippy Toes Miniature Goats just before she moved down to Tasmania. Uh, we were very lucky that she agreed to sell beautiful Hermione to us based on her name alone. <laughs> I love this little goat. But the deal was that we had to buy Piper as well, which I'm actually pretty excited about now because she's a beautiful girl and she's a good milker. Uh, they were both in milk when they came to us. They're dried off now waiting for their babies to come. And this will be their third kidding. Both of them their third time. They've given twins both previous times, but it'll be their first time kidding with us. So we're pretty excited to see what they give to us. Hey, you having a good old time chewing? So day 140, we're going to start checking ligaments and she's still pretty tight in there. I can feel both of her ligaments pretty easy. She's, um, she's pretty big this year. I'm thinking twins again, or maybe even triplets from her. Holy moly, Hermione. Where Piper doesn't really, she looks a bit bigger today than she normally does. Um, oh, baby coming in. Hello, you crawling through goat pee. Yeah, cool. And Utter is starting to bag up, but nothing too crazy just yet. So we'll just every day keep checking on her. And then when I notice that her ligaments are gone and she's kind of acting like today will be the day, we'll move her into the kidding pen that we're gonna go prepare inside the shed. Hi, Cherokee. So in previous kiddings, we've kind of just left the does in the stalls that are out in the barn, but um, we live in this kind of modified shed here. And like I mentioned before, my husband's away at the moment and I always end up having nighttime kiddings for some reason. It's either 8.30 at night or 1 o'clock in the morning. Um, and it's just a bit tricky <laughs> to get this one and the baby uh, in and out of bed, down the stairs, in the cold, in the dark, wake them up. Or if I'm out checking the does and they're asleep and they wake up without me, they kind of freak out. Um, so I figured it would be a little bit easier this time to kid the does just in here. So we've just set up a little portable pen just out of Rio mesh and I've just bailing twined it together um, and we're about to set it up the rest of the way because we're day 140 now so it's kind of getting close to go time and we're going to prepare this stall and get it ready for first Hermione and then Piper. So this is the pen um, just a, a little temporary pen with the Rio mesh not huge but plenty big enough for a Nigerian dwarf to be able to bed down and and safely have her kids um, so we've just laid a couple of tarps down to start with. Um, and then this... <laughs> Peyton! <laughs> you having fun? She hasn't been allowed in here yet. It's been set up like this for about three days. This bedding is just the um, Protec Equine bedding. It's like a... I'll try and find a whole one if I can. It's a bit, bit hard. But they're um, <laughs> like a pellet kind of style bedding. 
they come in bags of just these pellets and uh, you soak them with water and they kind of fluff up into this beautiful fluffy light sawdust and then you can kind of add more water as you go but they're they're kind of like the absorbent layer i guess um and we're just going to gently spread them out nothing too crazy it doesn't have to be perfect but this is just going to be the base layer and then we're just going to add a bale of like any straw bedding or like a sugar cane mulch type is it in your eyes well stop throwing it then like a sugar cane mulch just on the top um it is august here at the moment so end of winter still a little bit chilly in the mornings and overnight so we just want to make sure she's all nice and warm uh, to have these kids and then we've just got a little gate here nothing fancy <laughs> it's all strung together with baling twine and then i'll probably use these uh, just like double-ended leads that are, we got from um walkabout tails who does all of our collars and tags as well and we'll just use that to tie the gate shut as needed that way kids can be sleeping just inside or that's our bedroom upstairs um and everything's right where we need it we've got power we've got water whatever we need and kids will be nice human kids that is will be nice and safe and dry won't you oh in your eyes ow okay i'll help No, you cannot have a knife, but I'm going to cut it open, and you can help me spread it around without going too crazy. Ah. <laughs> what? Oh, are we? Eat! We don't eat this. Do we? So what are you going to help me do, Sienna? Let me just put this knife here. Let's see if I get it. We're just going to gently spread it around, no throwing it crazy because we don't want it to go everywhere. We're just going to spread it. Ah. <laughs> Good job, Peyton. Over this sawdust, okay? We're going to try and keep it inside the fence, all right? So don't throw it, just put it down. She'll spread most of it around once she's in here anyway. Me? No, Hermione. Hermione. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so our kidding kit. We just keep in this like little red toolbox that I stole from my husband, um, which is nice and handy. I normally keep it in the milking shed and it's kind of like a communal first aid kit. It's not like specific to kidding. It's got bits and pieces from, from all walks of goat husbandry in it. Um, but pretty much all of my kidding supplies are in here. Now there are still a few things I need to run and grab, like our gloves. We've only got a few pairs left. I've got to go um, get some more of those. But I thought I would do a little bit of a run through of what we've got in here like i said before we're like we're fairly new to kidding this will be i think our seventh kidding in total so there's definitely some things in here that maybe not 100 percent necessary um and i might not have things in here that you think are totally necessary so if you have any extra things that hello seven anything extra that i don't have in here that you think that i should have that i should add um, or anything that you found super handy if there's anything I missed out, please let me know in the comments because I would love to continue adding to my literal toolbox. Um, I've learned a lot from a lot of other people, but I'm always happy to learn more and add more things and be more prepared than I need to. My kind of motto is I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Um, so the main thing that we have on hand is gloves. And I've got, I think, three pairs left in here. Um, I don't have the big long gloves that go up to your armpits, although they probably would be handy. I just have the little wrist length gloves. Um, and that's obviously to try and keep yourself clean if you have to assist or um, you, God forbid, have to go in and, you know, untangle a kid, which I actually had to do yesterday with a friend's goat, Pam, who I actually used to own. She's Poppy's dam. Um, she had her kids yesterday and I didn't have any gloves. Well, there was gloves there, but... We untwisted her kids and got them all out nice and safe. Um, but gloves, I think, are a must, especially because I've got my children. Um, don't want to be getting my hands all gooey and then having to pick up the baby or something like that. Um, I have a little nasal aspirator. Um, some people call them a bulb syringe, nasal aspirator. I call it the sucky thing. And we just use that to clear the kids' airways after they come out. Some people think that they're not necessary. It just makes me feel better um, knowing that we've got all the fluid out that we can. So normally when kids first come out, what I'll do is use like a puppy pad or a towel and give them a good clean off on their nose and their mouth. Um, try and scrape all the, the fluid out of their nasal passage just by running your hands down quite firmly. And then I'll also use this to suck any, any goo out of their mouth and their nose if I need to. Um, and then in hand with that, with the gloves, we have a big old jug of lube. Um, 
there's nothing else I really need to say about that. Just obviously if we're going to go in and help assist to retrieve a kid, uh, you want it to be as comfortable for the doll as possible and you want to try and make sure you're not tearing anything or um, causing her undue uh, discomfort. So lube is a must. Um, what else do we have in here? I've got some baby wipes for wiping either myself or kids or does just to keep everything nice and clean um, along the way. I do have, I thought I had a pair of scissors in here, but I must have taken them out to sterilize them. But I've got a sharp pair of scissors for cutting uh, umbilical cords. And then I also have a um, iodine spray that I'll use to spray the umbilical cord as well. Uh, we cut them probably about this far from their belly. Uh, just so that their cords aren't trailing in the dirt although it's pretty clean in here you just saw us set up the kidding pen it's pretty clean um but we don't want you know any infections getting into the kids it can cause them quite a bit of grief so cut them nice and short so they're not trailing through sawdust and dirt and poop and muck and all that kind of stuff and then spraying it to keep again keep that clean like an antiseptic um we also have an antiseptic spray cetrogen i'm a horse person horse people always have this on hand purple spray it's just like an antiseptic antibacterial like aerosol spray that you squirt on wounds and stuff um just in case i never really have to use this but i keep it on hand for things like sometimes a mum will get a bit overly enthusiastic about cleaning their kids and she might you know lick them too much and i've seen kids uh, end up bleeding on their ears or on their umbilical stump from mums cleaning too much so that's always good to have on hand and for general wounds as well like this isn't just my kidding kit so general wounds like poppy our little doe she um recently just split her hoof open uh, and kind of like it was quite bad she kind of cut from the hoof wall all the way down the side um, and it was bleeding so we cleaned it up and we, i was just spraying that just to keep it nice and clean keep the flies off it and help it heal and then bandage it up too so we normally have bandages and things i've taken out most of the stuff that we won't need so i'm not digging through to look um, a tube of white healer. Again, I'm a horse person. This is on hand from, from Horsey First Aid Kit. And I actually learned this, well, learned it. I added this to my kidding kit based on uh, what Kylie from Dada Do Anglo Nubians actually said. She uses Potty's white ointment, which is very similar. But something that I didn't really think about is for the does aftercare, after they kid, uh, wiping a little bit of it's again just like a zinc based uh, antibacterial cream just to help like kind of soothe and heal, help the swelling go down. And you just rub a little bit on their vulva and they'll spread it around with their tail and it just helps them a little bit after their kid. Hello Peyton. Um, this year we do also have a kid puller. Um, I've never used one before. I've had to pull a kid a couple of times and yesterday was the first time I actually had to like properly assist where I actually had to push a kid back in, untwist its front legs that were kind of all tangled up and a front leg was way back so I had to reach in and pull its front leg out. The theory behind this as far as I'm aware is you kind of just wrap the loop around its head and front legs and you're able to pull it tight and use that to pull the kid out so there's not bits slipping back in you're trying to keep a hold and untangle and fingers crossed like I said we have it and don't need it <laughs> rather than the other way around um, so that's good to have on hand I do also have a whole bunch of needles and things um, these are oh, 21 gauge needles uh, but that's more for things like vaccinations and things if a doe is a little bit down and flat after kidding i'll give her a vitamin b shot which tends to perk her back up i also like to give my does a uh, probiotic after they kid um and again if she's like kind of down she's kind of flat and it's just like a kind of same as a horse drenching syringe it is actually a horse probiotic um, which i find lasts a lot longer and you just kind of twist it to the dose you need and you can just apply it orally just squirt it into their mouth um, or sometimes I'll dispense it into like a little container or something and use a smaller syringe to suck it up. Like I always have little, like these little one mil syringes floating around for various reasons. So that's that. Um, I do also usually have a thermometer on hand. I need to go get another one when I go and get some more gloves because my uh, horse vet actually borrowed it. She came to treat a horse uh, a little while ago and she put her thermometer through the wash. So she asked if she could borrow mine and I don't know where it ended up after that. What's up, Papa? You need the boots. Um, so scissors I normally have that I don't have in here. Wipes, all of that. I've got, come here, darling. I've got soap and water on hand. You coming? You wanna go in? Brief baby break. <laughs> she wanted to see the cat and then the cat jumped away. Uh-oh. Um, what was I saying? Soap and water I've got on hand. We always wanna make sure our hands are nice and clean before we go in and touch does and stuff do you want to play with this yeah cool uh i've got bottle teats for 
bottle feeding kids. Um, and we just use little 250 ml, the kids drink, you know, little pop top juices all the time. Um, so these screw on really well to that and they're 250 ml bottles, which works out well for us with the Nigerian dwarfs. Um, these teats I've found pretty good. I haven't had any issues with them, but I haven't had any issues with any other kinds of teats either. They're the Pritchard teats that make it nice and easy for them to drink from. Uh, we do bottle feed our kids, but what we tend to do, do you want this? <laughs> You're just going to stand there. Uh, we kind of leave the kids with mums anywhere between one to three days, make sure they get all the colostrum that they need. Um, and then we'll actually separate them and start milking mums. Yeah. And then feeding the milk straight to the kids. So we'll keep the dough in here for a couple of days with her kids. Then dough will go back out to the paddock and in our milking stall, we'll actually have another one of these. Yeah. Do you need a cuddle? You want to come here? Another one of these Rio mesh uh, panels that we've put like sort of fortified with smaller scale, like chicken mesh. Um, along it so that the kids can't fit through because obviously these squares a Nigerian dwarf kid can very easily slip through that um, And we've got that kind of barricading off the milking stall. Yeah, so the kids will be in there. We'll be able to milk the does and then bottle feed the kids straight away And the reason we do that is we sell most of our kids as pets and we want them to be well handled I've been through it before with milking does that were not well handled. They were dam rays and it was just stressful on all counts. I would spend hours chasing them, trying to catch them and bring them in. And we've set up our system a little bit better now that I probably could deal with those does now. Um, but before we had everything fenced the way I needed it to, you right, it was just hard. So now I bottle feed kids only. I won't damn raise them anymore. I can't handle that with having small children as well. Um, I just don't have the time to be chasing damn raised kids around. It makes it easier to be able to handle them. We want to get into showing as well, so I want them well handled, easy to, you know, to catch and, and do things with. Um, what else do we have? We have, come, come for a little walk, Miss Peyton. Oh. We've got some towels hanging up on the side of the pen, ready for uh, delivering kids onto, cleaning them off. Um, just somewhere nice for them to sit until their mum dries them off so that they're not getting sawdust and everything all over them and hay. Um, and then something that I think is super important to have on hand. So this is kind of like our feeding shed. We'll have everything we need to give them hay and feed and stuff. Uh, we've got a sink right here, usually what we use for our, all of our milking supplies and things. But we've got hot water if we need to. So the does like to have a, a nice hot drink of molasses tea we call it um after their kid we'll make a nice warm bucket of water and mix some molasses into it which is another thing i need to get but we also have a fridge here and freezer stocked full of frozen colostrum um, from previous kiddings we always try to save a bit of colostrum and sometimes we'll have milk on hand as well just to, you know god forbid something happens to the dough and she can't feed the kids or we don't have colostrum and we need to get that into the kids we've got some that we can thaw out um, and I think that's about it. So we've got our towels, we've got our kidding kit, that'll all be nice and close by. That's all there. Colostrum if we need, we've got running water, we've got a vet on call obviously, just in case anything goes wrong. And another thing that I've got too, is a little camera, just sitting, uh, just in here, which is something that I've been meaning to get for a while. And I initially planned to get that and stick it out there at the, well, there you can't see, which is the goat yard. I uh, didn't quite reach that far with the Wi-Fi, but it's the UFI 2K indoor pen and tilt security camera system. Um, and what that's going to do, hopefully, is sit there. I've got a little SIM card that I've inserted into a or SD card so that I can record continuously. It's kind of just sitting. I'm still working on the camera angle, sorry. Just sitting there with a good view, and I've already set it up and kind of checked um, of the dough. So once I bring her in, I don't have to be by her side nonstop, which I probably will be anyway. Um, yeah, I know. I'm here so that it can keep an eye on her. I can just whip up my phone, check everything, make sure she's all good. Where are you, Peyton? And then come out when it's go time and help her deliver her babies. I know. Come here, come here. Yeah, mama. So I'm gonna tend to baby, but that's pretty much everything that I wanted to cover today. Um, I think that was all, I didn't leave anything out, but if there's anything that you think I should add to my kidding kit, or any tips that you can give. I would love to hear them because again, we're still fairly new. This is our seventh kidding, I think in total. Um, and everything touch wood has gone really well so far. So we're hoping to continue that trend, aren't we? Yeah. So until next time, thank you for bearing with my 
children and my awkward filming. Um, this is our first kind of vlog style video that we've done and I'm hoping to do a few more of these. Uh, it's going to take a while to get used to talking to the camera and having the kids figure out what's going on and um, learn all of that stuff. So sorry if it's a bit all over the place, but that's what we are all over the place here. I'm not going to pretend like it's all smooth. <laughs> um, and hopefully our next video that you see will be Hermione delivering her babies. So we'll see you next time.